is planning to open a medical marijuana clinic uh, here in Halifax. In fact, the Medicinal Cannabis Resource Center is already advertising in the Weekly Coast, offering to arrange Health Canada authorizations for medical marijuana by Skype. Debbie Stoltz Giffen is a medical marijuana user. She's with Maritimes United for Medical Marijuana, and she joins us on the phone this morning. Debbie, good morning to you. Good morning, Rick. How you doing? Not too bad, thanks. And you? I'm okay, thank you very much. What do you know about this medicinal cannabis resource center? Well, what, from what I can garner uh, online with doing a little bit of research, Rick, they're, they're uh, claiming to help patients achieve a better quality of life, and they're dedicated to assist patients uh, with their use of medical cannabis, and, and uh, the doctors there certainly have an understanding of cannabis and, and uh, cannabis-derived medications. There seems to be some eyebrows raised though over this uh, Skype issue that we can Skype them and after a uh, 10 to 20 minute uh, interview with one of their doctors I could be cleared to have uh, access to medical marijuana that just seems a little loosey goosey I guess well actually in in researching on their site they're claiming that it's more like a 30 to 40 minute appointment and they do require medical verification of a person's uh, condition before they proceed uh, however I mean it's just been what a year and a half two years since Dr. Cameron from Ontario was here in, in in the province of Nova Scotia with more of a mobile type clinic and he was also doing Skype appointments and and now he's facing charges in, in Ontario and, and Nova Scotia both because of it. So one's left to wonder how, how is one any different than, than the other at the end of the day. Will this, uh, will this uh, clinic, uh, and I think he's talking about perhaps later this spring, uh, or maybe it's next year, Andy, sometime uh, he plans an opening uh, clinic both in Ontario and uh, here in, in Nova Scotia. Will this give you and other medical marijuana users better access to medicinal marijuana? Well, my understanding is that the opening of the clinic is set to coincide with the implementation of the new medical cannabis program federally. Um, and, and that's opening it up so that a doctor can sign for any condition that a patient may have as long as the doctor feels that it will benefit that, that uh, patient's personal condition and and uh, yes it will be a benefit for some patients who have the four hundred dollars to apply for for the process because none of this will be covered by the uh, provincial coffers from what i understand it looks like it will be set up more like a private clinic okay now if i was to go see a, uh, my family doctor here in nova scotia to talk about medicinal marijuana would i have to pay a fee to him as well Pardon me? If I was to see my uh, a family doctor here in Nova Scotia as opposed to going uh, through the Medicinal Cannabis Resource Center, would I have to pay a fee to get a medical marijuana permit as well? Well, um, MSI doesn't cover physicians in Nova Scotia filling out any form of, of paperwork other than, of course, a, a report to go have an x-ray or, or blood work at the lab kind of thing. So it's been left all along to the discretion of, of the individual doctors whether they will will charge you or not. For instance, I've, I've never paid a dime to have any doctor in this province sign my, my medical paperwork. Hmm. Uh, 10.25 is our time. Debbie Stolz Giffen is with me on the phone. She's with the Maritime Maritimers Unite for Medical Marijuana. Uh, so, do you think that if this clinic does uh, get set up, that there'll be issues with uh, police and such? Uh, what kind of mood is it uh, with law enforcement these days, uh, with all of this talk, Debbie, about you know legalization, decriminalization, and, and this, uh, again, increasing use of medical marijuana? Uh, what do you think the uh, chances are of uh, this clinic coming here and, and not getting harassed at all? Well, I suspect it will be kept under close watch, close, close, and close scrutiny. And uh, in fact, just this morning, I heard from a patient who uh, had been raided by the RCMP and, and subsequently charged for uh, a small amount of cannabis. They were very small seedlings, but enough to qualify for uh, Bill C-10 if... if uh, the prosecutor decided to to take that tact in in this case and this gentleman has been unable to find any physician willing to sign his paperwork because he's facing one of the overwhelming 
problems that many citizens in Nova Scotia face. He doesn't have a family doctor who's yeah. able to track his physical condition, monitor the medications that he's, he's tried unsuccessfully, or to d discuss with him the medications that he could try but, but is fearful to try because he knows what those side effects might be. Yeah, you heard our conversation this week with uh, John Quinn, the uh, Dartmouth resident and uh, medical marijuana user who's going to the Nova Scotia Human Rights Commission, filing a complaint claiming he's being harassed by uh, the building superintendent in which he lives over his medical marijuana use. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I, I think it's it's horrific. Health Canada created a program 13 years ago now, and they did nothing to to marry it up with with anything else. They created it like it was an island and shoved it out in the middle of the ocean, and have left critically and chronically ill Canadians to fend for themselves ever since. And it's it's just appalling that people who who are ill have who have resorted to cannabis as medicine continue to be discriminated and stigmatized time after time after time and it seems you know in the passage of 13 years you'd expect this to be subsiding somewhat and if anything else and and perhaps it's thanks to our present day harper government this seems to be uh increasingly being ramped up in instead of uh, being subdued and people being educated to the benefits of, of medical cannabis and, and some of this subsiding in our lives. Well, I, I listened to an interview, or watched an interview that uh, Steve Murphy did with uh, Peter McKay last night, our justice minister, who he seemed to be kind of uh, warming up to this whole marijuana issue. I don't well, know if you saw that or not. I did, and actually, if the truth be known, back in the day when the federal government were forced by the courts of the country to look at uh, creating a medical cannabis program, he was then one of the progressive conservatives, because they did still have the word progressive in front of their name, who was in, was in favor of this program. But certainly, when you listen to the fine, the fine print, read between the lines of what he was saying, um, he's... he's in agreement with medical cannabis, but of course you have to, to follow the parameters defined by Health Canada. And as most of us know, those those parameters are are, are uh, completely overwhelming for a lot of critically and chronically ill people in this country. Indeed. Debbie, we'll continue to discuss this issue. Thank you very much for your time here today. Thank you, Rick. Have a good one. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Debbie Stoltz-Giffen, and she is with uh, Maritimers Unite for Medical Marijuana.